Roadhouse. If you haven't seen the classic Patrick Swayze movie, I'm sure you've seen the bit on Family Guy. It's, it is a classic. Uh, and many have felt, understandably, that it was sacrilegious to remake it at all, no matter the cast, no matter the circumstances. Uh, and this is very much a remake. It's not going to replace the original movie in any way, but that doesn't mean it's not worth a stream. Ooh, that eats Doug Lyman up inside. He wrote, if you, if you missed it, he wrote an editorial piece in Deadline, one of the top Hollywood trades, really coming out against Prime Video for refusing to release this movie in theaters. He even said he was going to boycott the premiere, but he showed up anyway. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. They showed us this movie on a, in, a, in a theater. They made us go to a theater instead of sending us a screener, which I thought was very ironic. Uh, but once you actually see Roadhouse, and no, and no matter what format you do, Lyman's complaint just comes across as absolutely ridiculous, hilarious, because this is totally a streaming movie. I can't believe nobody stopped him and was like, Doug, did you watch your own movie? You made a streaming movie. I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal said it was always meant to be a streaming movie. It seems everybody knew that but Doug Lyman. Uh, however, it's a pretty darn good streaming movie and plays directly into Prime Video's developing new brand, muscly dudes kicking butt and cracking jokes. Uh, in fact, this new Roadhouse is as much like Prime Video's very successful Reacher series as the original Roadhouse. And you might then wonder, well, then why don't I just go watch those two things, Grace? Why should I watch the new Roadhouse? Well, four reasons. I got four of them, okay? And this is the order of importance. One, Jake Gyllenhaal. Two, location, baby. Three, the rest of the cast. And then four, yeah, four, fight scenes. They're last, but at least they're one of the things to commend the film. It could, it could be worse. It could be worse. And they're not perfect, which we'll discuss. Now, I guess Doug Lyman, to his credit, did put all those things together. But to be honest, this film doesn't have much of a directorial stamp. You know, you don't watch it and go, who directed this? You know, or he really pulled it all together. Instead, you pay attention to pretty much everything else. Uh, and then again, the director does conduct all that. But I think, you know, it's, you know, in his editorial, Doug Lyman said that this movie tested higher than Mr. and Mrs. Smith and The Born Identity. And that's just, a, once you see it, again, that is a ridiculous statement. Now, I'm not saying those test, higher test scores aren't necessarily true, but maybe they pulled together a more targeted audience that were likely to, to spark to this film or something like that. Something's off. Because again, while I enjoyed, the, I enjoyed the new Roadhouse, it is ridiculous and laughable and offensive to anybody that you would put it on the same level as those other two movies. All right, now, but anyway, as I said, I like this movie. So let's go back to the reasons to watch The New Roadhouse. Jake Gyllenhaal. If you know, you know. If you're a Jake Gyllenhaal fan, uh, why not? But you, will, you, you understand what a joy it is to watch him work. And this is no exception. He is an incredibly nuanced actor with a lot of range. Plus, he did the work to turn himself into a believable fighting machine. Not just the workouts. I mean, there's, the first time you meet him, he takes off his hoodie and you're like, you are like, damn. Uh, but he learned the fight choreography. And he also, he really made an effort to play up the real life brutality of a physical fight. I mean, his emotions are as much in this fight as he is physically. And I loved that. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, on that note, does a great job highlighting the smart and philosophical aspects of Dalton, as well as his pain and fear of his own abilities. He's in a really low spot. There's an early scene in the film, I don't want to give it away, but he's at a real low point. And I, was, I came out of nowhere. Uh, I watched the original Roadhouse a long time ago. Um, so I'm not sure if it was in the first film. But I was like, oh, wow, that's bleak. I love it. Sold very, very well by Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, the mo um, and also Jake Gyllenhaal, by the way, it wouldn't be a Jake Gyllenhaal movie if he wasn't being a little loopy, and he does a great job with many of Dalton's reactions to some of the crazy stuff that happens to him while he's down in the Florida Keys, and beyond. Uh, but, and, and to the script's credit, you know, whatever was taken from the original, and the way they, if they repurposed it or added it here, they, they managed to continuously keep it interesting. Uh, the movie points out that, uh, the movie itself points out that Roadhouse plays a lot like a Western, and it does. 
But in some ways, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's Dalton is also very much, in my opinion, a Jesus figure. But Old Testament Jesus, because he is vengeful and violent. But that, it had a little bit of that. I mean, sometimes a Western can feel like that way too, you know, the wanderer. But I, I don't know, I was, guess, I was getting a Jesus vibe off of it. Jake Gyllenhaal's performance also reminds me of an iconic Batman line. This isn't a mud hole, it's an operating table, and I'm the surgeon. Incredible, iconic line from Frank Miller from The Dark Knight Returns. Ah, and you know what? Here, I kind of saw shades of that with Jake Gyllenhaal's Dalton, because he seems like a very responsible fighter, but then you realize just how dangerous that knowledge makes him. Ah, a lot like Batman. And in fact, as many of you might have already written down below, Jake Gyllenhaal was almost Christopher Nolan's Batman. He was who David Goyer wanted for the role. Now, I think that Christopher Nolan ended up being the right choice, because Jake Gyllenhaal just doesn't have that blue blood look like Bruce Wayne is supposed to have. But he's a very good fit here with this role of Dalton. And the movie sets up that there might be more adventures down the line, right? More movies, maybe they could turn it into a series. Uh, I mean, then it would just be another Reacher, but I think different enough to coexist. You know, Reacher, I, you know, I, I give a nod in Reacher's direction. I see how successful it is. I like Alan Richson, but I gotta be honest, this appeals to me more. And that's why you would have two different shows like that. And really, I just want it as a showcase for Jake Gyllenhaal, who I think at this point in his career has earned a showcase. He's really, really good. Next, location, baby. Location, location, location. This movie is gorgeous. Jimmy Buffett, rest in peace, Jimmy, would love this. It's like, I mean, it could have could very, Roadhouse could very well be a Margaritaville. You ever been to a Margaritaville? I love Margaritavilles. Uh, but wow, it was, it was just so Jimmy Buffett, and I loved that. Uh, now, while the movie is supposed to take place in Florida, it's in fact actually filmed entirely in the Dominican Republic. Lovingly so. The weather is here. Wish you were beautiful, as Mr. Buffett would say. Side note, this movie, like from a producer standpoint, is just so incredibly, it's designed to be just so low budget that it's a thing of beauty. A line producer, in fact, is the person who's in charge of putting the budget together. But even a producer would, of course, be interested in this because you want to be able to spend your money on the film itself and not have to, you know, lose it all in locations. You know, whenever you're evaluating a script, if you want to make it, you can kind of gauge how expensive it would, how much money it would cost to make the film. And I'm sure when they were reading this script, they were like, ah, oh, this is just a dream come true. It's gonna look, it's gonna be so cheap to produce. It takes place in just a handful of locations, all in one spot, off the side of the road. You know, it's not very expensive to get these locations, but yet the movie's still gorgeous, and they can just, and they can just work. They don't have to move to a bunch of different locations. They don't have to do a whole bunch of setups. I mean, it's almost, it's in some ways, it plays like a one location movie. And that is just, I mean, again, if you are all have any experience or know anything about producing, you would know how exciting and beautiful this movie is from that, from that uh, perspective. But yes, it's all in the Dominican Republic and the cinematography is incredible and the locations so well used. I mean, it often reminds me of a cross between a Michael Mann film, Michael Mann, some beautiful like Florida shots throughout his career. And then also it reminded me of Netflix's Ozark, which also did a wonderful job bringing a specific region to life in a cinematic manner, some of the time. That's why I referenced a series because like Ozark, while some shots are gorgeous, nothing is, I mean, Ozark, I don't think ever got as beautiful as this movie, but close. But yet there's the imbalance that sometimes they go to a streaming shot and you're like, wow, that's flat. How did we just go from that incredible shot of the water to this uh, very much like TV streaming shot? Uh, that's your fault, Doug Lyman. All right, as I suspected while watching this movie, I was like, did they build this bar just for the film? And they did. I bet they didn't even build the top of it. I, built, I, I bet the wide shots are CGI. And who cares? They save money on the location. Build your CGI exterior. But it's a really impressive set that they built for the Roadhouse. I loved it. Very well designed. Uh, it just made it really a, 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 a dynamic part of the film. And then because they built it just for themselves, they were able to put it through hell. I was like, that's got to not be a real bar. Because then there, there's no way they could insure it, which is awesome for the movie, of course. But it really does look like a place worth fighting for. That, that didn't even occur to me while I was watching the movie. But when I was thinking about it, it occurred to me that they created this peaceful oasis intentionally to represent the inner calm that Dalton is really fighting for. And that's beautiful. I love that. 
All right, then third, the rest of the cast really excels well uh, as well. I've had an eye on Billy Magnuson for a long time. I know a couple of you have as well. I've called him to some of your attention. And I think it's sad that he has not been able to get a breakout role. He almost got an Aladdin spinoff show. Nothing's ever really worked out for him. But he's, again, he's excellent here. He does a great job. And he's a really good foil for Jake Gyllenhaal, as he seems his opposite in almost every way. He is very blue blood here. He does a great job. I loved him. There's one scene or sequence where he's wearing a pink suit. I mean, it was fantastic. He wore the heck out of that. It was great. And of course, everyone wants to know, how's UFC fighter Conor McGregor? Well, he's basically doing a mashup of Jason Momoa and John Cena, even down to a decent amount uh, of nudity from behind. Uh, and to his credit, I would say that McGregor is on par with Jason Momoa and John Cena. They better watch out. He might start taking some of their roles. He's playing, I mean, and some of you might, I know some of you are, apparently Conor McGregor is not very popular right now in the world of UFC. I don't follow UFC, so I don't know the drama going on over there. But I gotta say, as, a, as an impartial observer, I think he was a competent actor. He's playing a murder machine, an unstoppable force. So, so obviously the idea is, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? And I thought it was pretty interesting. McGregor not only goes all out to capture his character's craziness, I mean, he's willing to do anything. He's really zany. He has some crazy outfit choices too. I was like, where'd you find those pants? But he's also able to show that deep down, his character has some respect for Dalton because when they finally come face to face, he can see that they're cut from the same cloth. And McGregor, the script was able to convey that, but so was McGregor. I thought, again, I thought he was competent. Uh, I mean, again, as good as Jason Momoa and John Cena. Uh, kudos to Arturo Castro, who is a real scene stealer in this movie. He's fantastic. And also, shout out to Lucas Gage. He's been in a lot of stuff recently. He was in that infamous audition tape during the pandemic, where he called out the director for being a jerk. He was also on The White Lotus. He's done a lot of stuff, right? Uh, he was on uh, the latest season of Fargo. He's also an up and coming actor. And he also happens to be an LGBT actor. And he was really good as, um, a junior bouncer in the movie. And also at times I felt there was a little, t tell me if you pick up on this vibe. I thought there was a little bit of a romantic vibe between him and the other junior bouncer. And I thought that was a missed opportunity to highlight that the LGBT community has their own brawlers as well, because they certainly held their own. Uh, Lucas Gage did with the rest of the, um, the, uh, the, the action sequences. He was great. As for the ladies of Roadhouse, Daniela Melchior, we all loved her in uh, uh, The Suicide Squad. Great discovery by James Gunn. She is extremely well cast as Dalton's romantic interest, and they instantly seem like a perfect couple. You're like, ah, oh, you guys got a date. You're a perfect fit. It's the standard girlfriend role. It never really becomes that much, but to her credit, Melchior manages to do a lot with it. Uh, no steamy love scene though, like in the classic Roadhouse. And I thought that was an that was an interesting choice because it's still it's still rated R because it's an extremely violent movie. I'm surprised they because you know that's such a big part of the original film. Uh, Jessica Williams always does a good job. I like Jessica Williams a lot. Uh, while Hannah Love uh, Lanier and B K Cannon also make really strong impressions. And I love that Doug Liman cast them both, particularly Cannon as a spunky bartender. She reminded me of a female version of Samwell from Game of Thrones. I absolutely loved her. I thought she was great. All right, fight scenes. Now, as I said, these are fourth, but because there's a little bit of a problem with them, but I still enjoyed them. We're going to talk about the problems with the movie in a moment. Now, these fight scenes are extremely well choreographed and inventive, particularly with Dalton being such a precision fighter. I loved it. I loved how he said what he was going to do sometimes, and then he did it. Oh, it was great. I also liked how, he som how sometimes the movie went into fight vision and they would put you in the POV of one of the fighters. So you would not only like really get a feel for the violence and the pain of the fight, but how disorienting it is to actually be in one of these fights. So I thought that was great. And of course, there's a big finale fight, which did not disappoint. I was doing some ooing and aahing when I was watching it and wincing and covering my face a little bit. I was like, oh God, that had to hurt. And so that was good. So as I said, does the movie have some problems? Yes, it does. A big one is that, as I said, they made critics watch Roadhouse in a theater. Again, ironic because uh, Doug Liman's so upset that they won't actually release it in theaters. 
Uh, but you know, I, I don't think it needs to be seen in a theater. But the problem here was that at least at my showing, the sound VFX seemed extremely low. Like usually it's the dialogue that's too low and the, and the sound effects that are too high, but here it was the reverse. And so it made the fight seem more muted than I would have liked. So keep an eye on the volume when you're watching the movie. You might need to turn it up a little bit because it was so weird to have these beautifully choreographed fights and these really incredible punches and kicks and things happening and then the sound to not really come through. It's like you had, it's like you had your hands over your ears. You were covering your ears up while you were listening to it. And I just took some of the visceral quality out of it. Then there's the pace or the vibe. Now, I love Jimmy Buffett, as I said, but I don't know if the movie should have gotten as low key as it does. Like, especially in the first half, you often feel like you're just hanging out at the roadhouse waiting for something to happen. I mean, again, it's a vibe. It's a very distinct vibe, but it's one of the things that makes the movie seem more like a streaming film than a theatrical release. It's just a little too low energy of points. And then there's the idea that everyone at the bar, even regular people, just want to fight all the time and like really fight. I'm like, do you guys understand how hurt you can get in a fight? Like, why are so many of you willing to do this? Like, just like, seem like just, you know, regular everyday people were like, yeah, let's tear each other apart and beat each other into a pulp. And you're like, dude, you have a life. Like, it felt like there was something in the air or the water, you know? And I guess, you know, it came across sometimes like a little comical. And I guess that's where the family guy joke comes from. You know, like this crazy fighting that just seems to come out of nowhere and doesn't stop. So yeah, this new Roadhouse is a thousand percent a streaming movie, but it's a really solid one. It's not going to supercharge your evening though, so it's not really a Friday or Saturday type film. This is a great matinee or a weekday film, right? And if you like fight movies, Jake Gyllenhaal, or that Jimmy Buffett vibe, as I said, it's worth a watch. And as I said, I'd like to see Jake Gyllenhaal continue as this character. I think it's a really good fit with him. So that's my review of Roadhouse hitting Prime Video uh, Thursday, March 21st. Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.